Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, hopefully everything is working fine. A little bit behind today. I'm just going to do my checks just to check that the sound and the picture's coming through. Yeah, we're, 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 on, we're rolling. Right, uh, apologies, yeah, for being a little bit late, but hopefully it'll be worth the wait. So today's live stream, as you can see, we've got a love spoon in the vise. And the first thing that I want to demonstrate is carving this one here. So that's the sunflower. So that's sort of going to be the first, um, the first part of this demonstration is, is the live stream. As I said, apologies for being a little bit late. I was just, um, we were, we were fortunate enough where we've had a, a few few people in the workshop, which is a, a bit of a novelty now. We haven't seen many people for a while. Just checking. Good morning to the carver. Good morning. Yeah, you're you're in you're in our thoughts. That was a, a beautiful first attempt of a love spoon. Anybody who hasn't seen that and anybody interested, it's always great for us to uh, see others making love spoons, especially. And the carvers had their first go at making a love spoon and yeah, lovely attempt and um, nice to see somebody uh, making love spoons. Hope it's the first, we hope that it will be the first of many, but great stuff. Anybody else is uh, making any spoons? Good afternoon as well, Tommy. Um, yeah, good to have you with us. Anybody else as well? Any Anybody else who joins us? Be great to see if you've had a go at making any love spoons, be great to see how you got on. Um, yeah, this one, I, I thought this would be a good idea to have a go at making. This was a, a request that came in last week. So this was, um, yeah, one that sort of, uh, we, we actually designed whilst the couple who this is for, whilst they were actually down on holiday. So I thought it'd be best if they could actually see the design Excuse the banging. Um, so while they were while they were here, so what happened? They came in the workshop. I designed the spoon whilst they had gone to. I think they went to to see Tembi or somewhere like that, which is a, a local seaside resort quite close to where our workshop is. And while they were there, I designed the love spoon. I actually ended up doing two designs, and. We'd always share in techniques and methods that we use. What I actually did, I designed this top half and then I gave them two options for the bottom half. So what I basically did, I designed that top half, photocopied it, and then gave two alternatives for the bottom half. So maybe, you know, if you're looking for different techniques, we're always sort of doing things and thinking from a commercial point of view, thinking from the customer, what can we offer? Um, what can we do then that, that is sort of best for, for the, the individual that we're making the spoon for? And that, that is a, a little technique then that you can consider is designing one part of it, photocopying that, that part of the design and then giving two options on another part of the design. It's only a thought but that's one that we do. Uh, when it comes to carving then this sunflower, so that's the first carving that we're concentrating on. Basically what I'm gonna do, as I would do with a, a lot of the carvings that we undertake, we're gonna do all of our stop cuts. Thomas Woodcarver's just joined us. Do you wanna say hello to everyone, Thomas Woodcarver? Pranam da, good afternoon. Pranam da. Have you got a song? <coughs> You've got a song for, our, for a sunflower? Any sunflower, sunflower songs? I'll get you thinking. Um, this, to give you a background as well on the design, I think there was a link to Tuscany and the sunflower is a significant symbol for that region. So I think that's the background on it. Um, so yeah, that is why it's the main feature of this design. So talk you through what you've got here. You've got the bells, so for the peel for the celebration, you've got the entwined hearts with the initials cut out inside. We then got the sunflower, the eternity sign and the twist on the stem. And this is another thing for all of you who are interested then in wood carving, woodworking, and any of you who are looking to do it more business wise, if your work has a story and a message, we've said it a number of times before, it has that extra bit of meaning. 
it has extra appeal. Um, just in simple ways. So for instance, I mentioned that we had, we just had a couple in now for a spoon that was going to be for a wedding. That needs finishing too, doesn't it? Which one's that? Oh. Yes, Daz is going to sand a, a spoon there that I've started earlier. Um, yeah, they, they were just in, and one of the things we were telling them about was the wood that they'd chosen was a piece of teak, and the background with that piece of teak then, it is um, a recycled piece of teak reclaimed from some old furniture. And they said straight away, oh, I will, we'll tell them that because for them that will be really important. They'll be delighted to think that it's, it's a piece of wood, an unwanted piece of wood that's, that's recycled. So yeah, messages and stories in your work can be a really appealing feature. Now she's got another comment there by the symbol. I think it's the wood burning warrior. Good morning to you. Good morning and good afternoon to you all. Thank you for joining us. Great to have you with us. Um, so you can see we're working our way around. <coughs> As Thomas the woodcarving in here in the background. And we're just getting the stop cuts. And it's something then we were going over in our last live stream is stop cuts and how you can use them and how we do use them. But it's those fundamentals of carving that ultimately if you can get those right, they make the job a lot more easy. So we've started off with our drawing on the woods. As I mentioned before, not ideal because you're taking a little bit more of the edge off the gouge because you're cutting through a paper drawing. But in a design like this where you've got quite a lot going on and quite a lot of sort of intricate work, I always like to have those lines there to use as a rough guide. So you start off with the design and that sort of, um, how can we put it, a an appropriate image. So when it comes to designing the making, you want a, an image that, that you feel is, is good, basically. Uh, hello there. Hello, Marcia. Good morning, Song. You are my sunshine. There we are. Looking at Thomas singing in the background. Oh, he'll be back in a minute. I'll get him singing. So we got your, your sunshine. Whilst you're, as well, uh, as, as we got Marcia with us, um, I remember a couple of weeks back, maybe even a couple of months back now, we were asking everybody what you would like to see us make. And one, I remember Marcia was, uh, you were one that said to us about the, uh, the doll's house, the Welsh doll's house. It is made, the video is made, and it will be, it will be coming up on the channel in the, the next sort of, the weeks and months, according to, it, it's just how it sort of fits into the schedule of uploads, but it's all ready to go. Um, and yeah, it was nice for us to make the doll's house because we hadn't made one of those for 20, 30 years possibly. So it was a, a, a nice thing to be able to do again. Uh, we've actually as well used that one and one, one saw that we've started using again, which again, we sold ours, which proved to be a mistake. And that is a coronet, but thanks to the wonders of eBay, we located another coronet saw. And so the doll's house was made using the coronet saw. So it's amazing how we've in, in many ways, we're sort of going back all the time and revisiting a lot of things that we, we sort of were doing 20 and 30 years ago. I'll also put it out there to you all as well, because we're very grateful for how much you all contribute to our channel. And I will put it out there. If you've got any requests, if you would like to see us demonstrate any uh, scroll saw projects, any wood carving projects, if there are any areas, anything in particular that you would like us to focus on, let us know because it's always great to be able it's the best way for us to know that we're producing the videos that you all would like to see. Another, I just noticed we've got another comment there. 
Yeah, that one. As you're saying, yes, that, that video is, is ready to go. Um, another one as well, while it's, um, while it's in my head, uh, what was I thinking? The, um, no, it's gone out of my head again. Uh, just to go back then and focus on what we're doing, as you can see, I've done those stop cuts now and I'm just working on the outside petals. So we're just pushing the depth down. It's come back to me. It was the conversation I was having with the carver. We were talking midweek on Instagram and we were talking about um, the carver. I, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but you've just done a beautiful carving of a shield. Fantastic, sort of the crest. Really beautiful piece of work and asking us for sort of feedback on it. And it, I, I think it's relevant for everyone in regards to what we do and what you do. When it comes to sort of feedback, I've always sort of been brought up then on the idea that in many ways, the best feedback that you can give is your own feedback. So what I mean by that is we can give you sort of ideas of what we might see, but when it comes to when it comes to your own work, quite often the best person to sort of go to is actually yourself. So it's it's to ask yourself the question: What would I do differently if I did it again? How could I do it differently if I if I did it again? And what do I feel the strengths and weaknesses of my own work, of any sort of particular project, what do I feel they actually are? Um, Dad's just walk, walked in. We've had a request for you to sing uh, You Are My Sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. sunshine. You make me happy. Tommy's carving some. Tom, Tommy's just told us he's he's you carving some hawthorn so bird. Have you ever carved anything like that? Please don't take my sunshine away. There you go. What was that so, your name? Tommy is carving some hawthorn bird. Have you ever carved anything like that? Hawthorn bird. There we are. Well, like, you know, obviously the hawthorn, yes, but um, a burr. So you get burr elm. Yeah. And... So there we are. That's what he's working on. Right. You get all sorts of different burrs, don't you? Yeah. Um, it's not hawthorn. I'm thinking now. What have we got in the fields? Is it it's, hawthorn? It's yeah. hawthorn, yeah. is it? It's not hornbeam. No hawthorn. Hawthorn. No, there we are. We've been planting some of that in the yeah. field. In fact, the hawthorn around here is thriving because. Um, a lot of the ash trees that were towering over they're, they're having the opportunity the hawthorn, to yeah because they've been cut down because of the ash dieback yeah so the hawthorn is actually um you it's know, it's in a good moment yeah yeah we've just been uh, i just been talking about some of the different things as well um feedback i was talking because midweek we were we were talking with the carver and asking you know, for feedback. And I was explaining how quite often the best feedback comes from, comes from within, you know, actually looking at your own work um, and making assessments then on how you can improve it yourself. I think if you can satisfy yourself, that is a big part of the challenge, isn't it? Yeah, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, it's twofold. If you're, in, if you're in business, the customer is always right. Yes. So, um, well, I think that takes us on. You've just reminded me of the other thing I was thinking of. Because that was the feedback I was thinking for the carver, is actually if we were gonna do, if we were gonna do the carving, you know the carving I showed the crest? You know I showed you the crest midweek? Yeah. With the crest. If we were gonna do that, one of the main things that we would actually end up doing differently, we wouldn't actually do it with as much depth. And the reason for that is to carve it with the depth that the carver had done. It was a beautiful piece of work. It's more time. Yeah. And the longer that we're spending working on a job, the more expensive it becomes. So that's something then 
um, where we basically have to, as Dad said, it's, it's satisfying the customer, isn't it? Well, yeah. And it is finding that balance between the cost of making the piece, well, it's so the time involved in carving it. There's so many different views, there's so many different opinions out there, let's be fair. There are, One yeah. One man's meat is another man's poison, so, um, you know, you can please some people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. Is that something like I that? Think, I think that sounds right to me. Yeah, you're getting very philosophical on us, yeah, but you're very like, right. You know, very true. You're happy with what you've done. Spot you on. Present it to the customer. And I find, and it would be interesting because because you're all carvers who join us for the live stream. Um, is this something that you experience yourself? So we got Tommy there working um, working on the Hawthorn. I know the carver's working on different projects. You've got the wood burning warrior. You've got Marcia working. They're all, you're all working on different projects. Do you find that you'll be working on projects and you'll be worried about something and you'll show it to somebody else and quite often they won't even notice what you've been worrying about? Yeah. That, that can also, quite yeah, often happen you, when you carving. You won't please everybody all the time. You, yeah, exactly. just, you know, you're going to have situations where you know somebody you know they get a picture in their mind of what they want and um, you do your best to interpret what they want that's right but you know, as i say you're never gonna please you won't you know so you can and that's what and i think the biggest thing is because wood carving the time as you all know involved is is significant um, and so if you can sort of satisfy yourself and get, get to a stage where you are content then with what you produced, that is the most important thing really, isn't I think it? So, yeah. You, yeah. Yes, you've got to please the customer and, and do it, but I think if you can, um, well, what we, do, we show people a drawing. Yes. Um, so we draw it for them to see, and then we basically try and replicate as closely to the original drawing as we uh, as so we you can. Tell them the dimensions. You know what? How how long the spoon is going to be? How wide? It, how deep it's going to be? You know. So I think it's. I think the that on the sort of commercial front, I think is one of the hardest parts for. Um, you know, I think that can be one of the hardest parts to get right, really, because. As, I mean, this one here is what we call a bespoke spoon. And a bespoke spoon, all we mean by that is that everything in this design has been requested by the customer. And um, over the years, we've improved in terms of recognizing the amount of work that a piece is gonna take us. So the time that we're gonna spend on a piece, the level of difficulty that is demanded from a piece. That is a skill then in its own right. Um, it is sort of getting a better understanding for just how much work is involved in an individual piece. Because I, I think that is very much a skill in itself, isn't it? To, to be able to price. Because the, the tendency is, is you, I've always found the tendency is to underestimate the amount of work in a particular project. Oh, you know, it, 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 again, pricing. Oh, it, it. I think the best example we can give, dude, links and seeds. Yeah. That's the best example we can give of in the love spin. He's been allowed to leave my shop until it meets my expectations. Yes, yeah, spot on. Thank you. I did my first spoon last week. Oh, look, we've got another spoon. Another spoon being done by Marcia. Oh, we'd love, you'll have to put it on your Instagram. We'd love to see that. Um, do, you have a, do you keep an idea book with pictures or... Oh, yeah, we'll have to bring that in. Yeah, that that's... I don't know whether that's... No. We'll, we'll uh, bring our... Well, she was mentioning there. We'll bring uh, our design book in. Yeah, we will. We'll bring it in. I can't the back side... Yeah. ...and have trouble with consistent thickness. Well... Now, straight away, we... If you want, if you want us to carve the back of a spoon, then that's double the amount of time, double the work, and things like that. So this is interesting. Where 
I mean, that's one of the things we always do. We carve the we... inside of the bowl first and finish. That's right. Yeah. So we get the spoon done, sort of early, early doors. And, um, and I mean, in terms of working on the back, what we do, we take off the sharp edges, but we don't spend as much time working on the back. Um, basically, for example, a love spoon like this, if I spent as long working on the back as I do on the front, it, you're doubling the price, you're doubling the cost. Um, in terms of the ideas, yeah, do you, that one there, do you want to bring That's that through in a minute? Though, yeah, go for it. Just to let the carver know, Dad's just asking if you can use a piece of your sandpaper. So he's just, uh, he's going to have a go doing some sanding with the sandpaper that you sent us. Um, yeah, the, the, we, we, we keep all of our previous designs because we find it comes in useful. Like a symbol like this one here, a sunflower, this isn't the first time I would carve a sunflower. So... The previous designs I've got, and quite often, so for instance, the first time I carved the sunflower, there is actually an old video of that on our, on our channel. But the first time that I carved it would be very different to how I carve it now. But it's because we evolve and we change our styles, we are ch changing the way that we approach it. And I, I, I've, I've basically got a different design of sunflower and changed it slightly as I've gone on. Um, going back to then as well, the difficulty in terms of pricing and things like that. One of the best examples with the Love Spoon is we often get requested um, by people to do links and seeds and their traditional symbols. But the average time to do a single seed, what would you say for doing a single seed? It's, it's more than 10 hours work, isn't it, to do a single seed? Uh, not as long as that. Oh, it's, it's, it's surprising. Not it's surprising right. that you spent two days on that last one that you were working on, just the seeds. So it's, it's surprising how long we spend working on things like links and seeds. And so it's difficult then to actually produce them at a competitive price. I just checked there as well. We've got a few messages. Had my blues customer. Oh dear. Should the final piece customer basically told me. Oh dear. Took me a week. Oh dear. Oh dear. Customer problems. Yeah, unfortunately, you get that from time to time. Um, that is something. But it's. Unfortunately, something that uh, well, I can that can say happen. Duties in the eye of the beholder, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, one man's meat is another, another man's poison. poison. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, I, I I sympathise. I you know, over forty-five years. We've had a I, few. Had, we've had our fair share over the years of people. No, I, only a few, but it does. Hit you, the confidence. Yeah, you, you you only need a few. Yeah, you, you only need a few. Confidence, um, but at the end of the day, as I say, you can please some people. I think yeah, I think well, I think what you said there more. is is what you're saying there is very relevant. At the end of the day, you can only, as the carver, then you can only produce your what you think is right, what you feel is best. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately, you will always. I think it's get well, a few. You, 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 you've got to find, okay, you've got to find your own limitations and what you're happy to carve and what you're happy to make. But it's never a nice experience when you have some, no, something like that. Um, I think it's, it's, it's one of those things that a lot of, when we've had stuff like that, you do have to put it down to experience. Um, one thing we always in a position of so for instance when we take an order um we 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 don't take payment and things like that and that comes from experience um we we take um when it comes to payment we only do that after it's been completed and the reason that i've done it that way is because if the customer isn't happy then we basically, we still own the individual piece. 
And if you can't find a solution with the customer, then ultimately you we would keep we would keep the work and there we are. Nothing has sort of been um Well all you can do is keep the customer informed that's right. at every stage. Yeah. But it's never a never a nice experience. You You know, but you've got your drawing, then you've got your your uh, you, you know you, you can transfer it you can see you can explain the size so really speaking the customer also has a responsibility well that's right if you are working and you're doing what the customer has asked the customer also needs to recognize that you know that they have i mean that's why we do a, a drawing before we get started is so the customer can clearly see this is, you know, this is what you're getting. This is what we're agreeing on. Um, and unfortunately, with what you're talking about there, that sort of situation is very subjective, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah. unfortunately, you've just got somebody who's probably got something in mind. Um, uh, yeah, just just one of those one of those things, I'm afraid. But never a nice experience. So. Uh, we do we do sympathize with that one but over over the years you know thankfully we haven't had too many bad experiences but there are a few that stick in stick in my mind some of the ones that i've done a lot of the time I'm, I'm thinking of mistakes like that one there i i you know it hasn't actually got to that stage and things things like that i've managed to remedy things before the customer is uh is involved but that's what uh, that's what can happen when you're doing work for people now this one here as you can see we're we're getting that shape we've got those outside um, petals we've got that sort of depth pushing those back and we're just shaping the larger petals that are somewhat on the inside closer into the center of the sunflower and we're using those stop cuts all the time cutting down deeper as you can see we're shaping each petal um, just like so I think we've got a, a comment there which we shall have a check um, I say payment up front right yeah Ah, so that's the problem. If you're if you're doing, yeah, it's something that we we're in a position where we can do. Um, so that's the thing. If you're taking payment up front, yeah, it's that is something that we haven't we haven't sort of done uh, partly with that in mind. Yeah, I mean we're fortunate enough to be in a position where we don't have to take payment up front. That's right. Um, and uh, difficult one. Yeah. yeah always a difficult one so we we do it that way round because um, it means that everything is sort of seen before it's paid for so you can see we're just building up these different layers and we shape what I do with a carving like this one where we've got these petals we're um, we got those outside ones they're the they're the lowest level so we basically should end up here with three levels in our carving. So you've got the centre will be the most bold level. I won't show level. the face of these, Dave, but could I ask you, how many of these have not come back? Well, that's an interesting one, actually. What that is referring to here, yeah, this is the other side of it. We basically design, so for all of you to know, you know, in terms of a uh, business organisation, Dad's just gone to our list of bespoke love spoons of designs then that I'm, I, I've I sent to people. No, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I can tell you very quickly now. Um, one, two. Yeah, at the moment I've got two designs out of eight where I've designed them so that you can be talking anything. Well, I can put these now in front, the and backs I, in front of the camera. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't, we, we don't, don't put them in front of the camera, but basically the point we're getting at on this one, what happens with us in terms of when it, with what you're talking about, in the course of a year, I, I would basically, well, if you work it out, 
every every month or two, I will probably have at least two bespoke Love Spoon designs that I will do. And I'm just going to flash the back of that. So I that don't ever hear from the person again. Video. So I'm just yeah. Do it ever so quickly. So what that's there. There. Selection. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so so out, out of those, out of those that Dad's just put in front of the camera, there are currently two designs that have not um, that have not come back to me. So that's what we get a lot is where where we design everything for people to see, and then you never hear from the the, the customer, despite the fact that you've spent that time designing them. So that's what happens to us that's the sort of problem we get by designing everything before taking any payment and the other thing that we have so for instance i have been working um on different love spoons and sometimes i'll have to design them four five times and then it's it's difficult then because you're designing and redesigning the time say, that that takes. You know, you're depending really on the integrity of the customer, customer as well. Yeah. You know, uh, if, if they're genuine, uh, it may be, you know, something's happened. Well, typical of this year, you know, we've got a spoon in there, designed and made I think for somebody that we actually know yeah. personally. Yeah, and they never came back. And they haven't come back to us. Yeah, you know so what we, I mean? We, it's... I, <laughs> I think that it's, it's, what, when we're talking about these different experiences that you can have, I think it, this is where you get into the real um, business side of wood carving, that sort of thing. Well, you sometimes and learn more about the, the, the person that you thought yeah, was genuine. Yeah, there's, there's always, um, you're, you're always going to have different sort of experiences and things as you know when when you're doing when you are making things for people and you can get to a degree course out in in all sorts of different ways can't you yeah and it can be but, a genuine thing that some you know circumstances have that's right yeah is a nice story about, remember the one we did for well we had a situation yeah i'm thinking now um gentlemen now and he he runs he, he ran a very very successful local business, yeah. and he was well known locally because he was financially how can we put it very secure if you understand what I'm sort of suggesting he was not he was rather well off and he, he was always um, helpful and very generous. Yeah. And what happened, um, he was invited to a wedding, so he came in, he said, oh, I want, I want a love spoon made. And we made a number of love spoons for him. And we said, yeah, that's no problem at all. So we made the love spoon for him. And then about a week or two uh, after we'd finished the spoon, he came in and he said, oh, I'm terribly sorry, awfully sorry, boys. Um, the wedding's cancelled. So, I mean, that was the biggest disappointment for us, just thinking in, you know, some somebody in that couple sadly is yeah. you know found themselves in a very sad situation where you know not quite left at the altar but not far off yeah. isn't it which is is a terrible yeah. thing to happen to anybody um and if i remember right he, he came in well that's what i was getting on to he came in the workshop and he said but there we are it's not your fault it's not your fault by you so i'm here to pay for the spoon well the particular individual was always quite used to um, spending their money then and, and always, you know, they, they were known that as being very generous with yeah. their money. And, and we turned around and we said, no, don't worry about that. We'll keep the spoon and we'll put it on sale here and we'll sell it. And this particular individual, they were insistent. No, no, no. I, I, I asked you to make the spoon. I want the spoon. Well, it got to the stage where we were nearly arguing yeah. um, <laughs> and I refused to sell him the spoon. <laughs> so I told him, I said, no, I'm not selling you the spoon. You don't need it. And so he was saying to me, no, no, no. I asked you to make it. I want, I said, no, I said, I'm not selling it. So anyway, he went out the shop and we kept the spoon and sold it. So somebody else got to enjoy that spoon and it ended up all fine. Well, there is a bit of a twist to the story because we've never seen him again. <laughs> so I think I may have upset him because I didn't let him buy the spoon. 
No, I don't think so. I think. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. It's just the way. It's the way. It's the. You can't change it's, the way you are. And, uh, it's the nature of people, and and sometimes, um, you have a situation where we do our very best, as I'm sure all of you. I, you know, we've interacted with you through our live stream, and you can tell all of you, you know, do your best, and you're doing your best for the recipient. You want them to in enjoy and appreciate the efforts that you've gone to, and you, you're looking for a fair price for a for a fair job. Yeah. And you're hoping more than anything that they will appreciate the work that you have um, undertaken. And it's not nice then when you're on the other side of it and it, it, it hasn't worked out in that way. So we do, we do fully understand and, and appreciate that it's not a nice experience. On this one now, as you can see, I got a spike. I'm having to work at a bit of an angle, which will probably help you to be able to see it better because I don't know what dad's been doing to sharpen this one, but I got, I got a wonky spike. <laughs> so... It was done for a particular reason. Ah, right? there we are. Done He's done it for a specific reason. Yeah. So all I all I want to do, um, I want to, and I, I'll be honest with you, I'm struggling to remember the name. What do you call these sunflower seeds? I got the Spanish in my head. The Spanish, the slang for it, they call them pipas. So I got pipas in my head, but they're sunflower seeds, aren't they? So I'm just creating an impression now, just to finish off of the sunflower seeds in the center. What you could do as well, as I've been talking, I've been sort of going over things. Um, you know, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, I've sanded it over because I, I quite like a nice smooth finish as I as I sort of go along, um, go along with, with what I'm doing. Um, but you can finish, you could go, you know, you could change the carving however you want to. Again, it's just a nice carving. Hopefully it gives you another idea for, for something that you may be interested in having a go at doing and, and demonstrating yourselves. So you can see, there we are. So that's our outside line. And then I'm going to do a few more little lines of sunflower seeds. I also didn't mention to you all... Uh, the wood that we're using, this is a piece of oak. An oak we've been running short of as a result of um, the, the lockdowns that we've been uh, affected by. So um, we managed to get hold of some more now because we were right down to our last few pieces. So you can see we're just going to finish off that line. Just, am I, can I get, this is where I'm trying to decide, can I get one in there or can I just squeeze in two so I can get two in that line? And I'm just thinking as well, did, have you got some shellac there? Yep, we get some shellac because I need shellac for the first coat on this as well. So, so there we are, fine. so we can organise ourselves with the, the shellac. And I think this time I'm just going to do one indent on that side. Not ready for it yet, do you? And I reckon just one in the centre then, just like so. So what I'm doing, I'm organising my carving in a specific order. I'm just going to check just to see if I've missed any comments there. Apologies about that. Um, would you offer uh, to help provide a design as a paid service? E.g. if I'm describing... Oh, Marcia's left this. Uh, I'm just looking at all breeze comment here. Um, I.e. dimensions of what I would carve, I could pay you just for the design. The discussion okay. of price when it comes to what people stop, decide to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I said, the carver is hilarious. You always manage to hit the nail on the head. Um, so butterflies and sunflowers can be all last pipas. Um, yeah, the, the Spanish, yeah, they call it Las Pipas. Uh, would you offer to help provide the designs a paid service? If I was to describe an idea of the dimensions, could I pay? Right, so what you're looking for, so butterflies on sunflowers. Right, I mean, if we were doing a design and things like that, 
Um, so the first thing you may notice, if you were looking for a butterfly on a sunflower, then you're starting to complicate it because we tend to go for sort of pure symbols, as in, I tend not to do things where putting a symbol on top of another symbol. I, I'll be honest, it's, it's just what we do and how we do it. And that's our design in style. I like clear symbols. So if I was designing something with a butterfly and a sunflower, I, I would normally um, design them as, as two separate symbols. Um, the other way I might do it is, and we, I normally work from the one single solid piece, but if I was doing something like that as a scroll saw project, I've done that before for scroll sawing, is to um, do it in two layers and stick the two layers together. The problem you have with wood carving, and it's not to say that you can't do it, of course you can. Um, when you start putting a symbol on top, so for instance, they're saying about a butterfly on top of a sunflower, when you start getting into that, you're then dealing in a lot of different layers, and it, it can, it's, it, 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 it adds a degree of difficulty, doesn't it? Because we tend to go for clearly defined symbols. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd have to increase the depth of the wood. You'd have to decrease, uh, the sunflower would have to be pushed back. Yeah. So you would have, like, what I'm, what I'm getting at here, we got three layers. We got the back layer for the, 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 the petals that are further back. We got the mid layer with our main petals, and then we got this center, which is your top layer. So that's three layers. Now, once you bring in, say, a butterfly on top of this, that increases it by another two or three layers. So what you've got to do that that sunflower would now be down six layers. Yeah. I hope does that does that make sense? Yeah. But you do come to a point when you you say, well, we we personally then. This is getting expensive now. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. And it's, it's just the carver, it's just the carver just said. And I gotta say, you always manage the carver, you've got, a, a, you've got an uncanny knack for hitting the nail on the head with it, where what, what, they, what, what the carver said is, is they always find that when you start talking about money, the conversation goes very quiet very quickly. <laughs> and yeah, it does. Um, and that is something I always think is to get it clear with the customer early on is the sort of costs because we get a lot of requests and it's basically oh we, i mean we woke up this morning the spanish say the spanish have a saying they say you want potatoes for the price of caviar <laughs> no no sorry i've got it the wrong way round <laughs> you want caviar for the price of potatoes oh, that's right, yeah. um so that's what the spanish say about it and that is something that if you are doing carving, would any sort of work commercially, you will find that people, their expectations of what, um, you know, what they can have for what they want to pay, um, not always, but some have quite grand ideas, but they're, I'm afraid, quite often they're... Fair play, most of the requests we're getting now, people are realising work involved and uh, a lot of people most I, people I are say, most people you know, are what, four or uh, five? it's it's no it's above 90 percent it's oh, above right. it's above 90 percent of the people who ask us to do things yeah. are are realistic and understanding what they do one, then, good one for the car then another five percent another at least five percent understand understand the um understand that when it comes to um, when it comes to handcrafts that maybe they haven't got the budget, there's another couple of percent that are willing then to adjust their expectations. But you'll always get that one or two percent that got completely unrealistic ideas for for what is possible there's within their the budget, in right? As he wanted to kick himself when he's given the price, and the customer said, "Is that all?" Aye, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we, we have that quite often, in fairness. Yeah. Oh, we, we'll, be thinking, we'll be thinking of a price, and that's what the customer will say. Oh, I was expecting it to be a lot more, and, um, but I'd rather be on that side of it. I'd rather the customer... I wouldn't. I'd, ra I, I'd rather... Ex <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't, but 
I'd rather exceed expectations than uh, than the other way around. But I think I think the amount of time what's interesting the amount of time that we've spent discussing it it yeah, does show you yeah, it, it is this is the biggest yeah. this is one of the biggest yeah. things that faces us all you know if you're making a living from wood carving this is one of the biggest challenges pricing customers not easy to not easy to to organize around yeah. these things yeah but, uh, but stick sure. stick in there because you you learn as well as yeah. you go in because our I mean with the with the bespoke spoons, oh the number of times over the years we used to design things like this and then think oh blimey neck this is way way under we had a terrible habit of under pricing yeah. the amount of time that it takes. Exactly but we've refined what we do and we've gained experience on what we do and we don't make as many mistakes as we used to. I, I wouldn't exactly be. What's happened now? <laughs> oh, I got, I'm being told to have a read. I won't repeat it from word to word. No, it's spot, spot on. We, this is something, and as I said with it, it's, it's getting everything, yeah, if you can get everything clear from the outset. The, the, the comment. <laughs> That's the something. Yeah, yeah. And then it says, spot I on. should have asked for more moments. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been there many times. Um, but it's, yeah, with it's it is a it's a it's a big it's a big area for for you to think through then because at the end of the day if you are doing this as a business you have to think carefully about the work that you do we we always are are very cautious in the amount of jobs that we take on yeah. because we doesn't take much. So for instance, as you can imagine, we have been very, very quiet this year because we've spent most of it in lockdowns. I think we've had maybe 12, 12 customers in the workshop, but it doesn't take much for things to turn around. Yeah, somebody else saying you yeah. I always undercharge, not confident enough in my work. And it's, that's it, it's confidence. It you've got, yeah. you've got, you've, you've, yet yeah, you've spot on. Um, who, who said that one there with the, who was that from? Marcia, yeah, you're right, Marcia. Confidence is, is a big, big thing. Um, and it, when it comes to pricing, you know, you, it's that confidence can, can have an impact then on, yeah. on what you're pricing. I'm, I'm always of an attitude now of uh, when somebody asks us to do a spoon, I'm always willing to not get that job. Yeah. Do you understand? Because um, you can underprice, and as I was saying, we're always, we try to limit, well we do, we limit the number of jobs. So for instance, um, once we start, like the love spoon you see I'm working on now, if I end up where I have more than five or six of these on at a time, I always think it's too it's too much because you can get yourself into trouble and it's your it's your reputation then and you don't want a situation where you're telling customers oh terribly sorry you know you've got your wedding coming up next week yeah that spoon it's not going to be ready for that that particular time so it, it's a we did our video midweek on organization and it is very much organization um We've changed a lot of what we do, excuse me, over the years in terms of organization. We, um, we, we make use of things like the photocopier. So I can see I've got two designs there waiting to go that I've just photocopied. So we've got an, another copy just in case we lose a copy of it and things like that because organization is not our forte. Have you just spotted another classic? Yeah. yeah. Do you want it good, fast, or cheap? <laughs> and you can only pick two. <laughs> 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 
And that's, that's the thing. It is, it's literally that. What we have as well, we'll have people requesting spoons and um, s sizes of love spoons. It never ceases to amaze me how the size of the spoon, how often people will have very specific ideas. So a love spoon like this, you may have somebody requesting something like this, but they want it about half the size. And it just isn't, you know, something like that then isn't realistic. Um, and I mean, that's why we run an online shop. And I always direct people to that if they're asking for bespoke work, you know, the one-off, the individual ones, so they can get an idea of budget, what is possible and what, what we offer then in our range. Um, but yeah, it's... It keeps us it keeps us busy and it keeps it keeps challenging us. I think those are the main main sort of thoughts. Um, but at the same time, as we as we're talking about it, you can see this love spoon takes shape. We enjoy doing what we do. It's a lovely process and it allows us to enjoy a a, a lovely a lovely thing to be involved with. And even when, you know, you have a, if you have a bad experience and, and things like that, you, hopefully the, the good outweighs the, the bad, you know, because you, you will get the odd one from time to time. What were you saying it is? You can't please all the people all the time. Oh. Sounds like another song coming on. Got to be a song around that, isn't there? As you can see, we've gone on to working on the uh, the bells now. On the other side of the bench, Thomas the woodcarver has been furiously sanding. What are you working on there? This is the one you. Um... Ah, this is this is for a diamond wedding anniversary. That one there. Oh, there we are. That, that well, one. Well, join a shellac it then, and you can show people this one. Yeah, you can show oh. that one there. So what we had to do, the love spoon that Dad. Should we just show is it? It's a secret, though. Oh, I tell you what we do. We show people. Basically, I'm going to put my hand over, hand over the names there. This is the 60th anniversary. What it was, they wanted two names carved on this love spoon. Um, that's and what we had to do, we had to widen the two hearts. So this design, we call it um, entwined hearts. Okay. We had to widen the design so we could fit the names on there. And that's um, that's that oak that we bought recently. I think by the look of it, isn't it? Yep. We've been really struggling to get hold of uh, any oak. It's been uh, it's been quite a little while well, that things have been that, closed we down. Been we just haven't been able to get out because of this virus thing. And, uh... That's why we've been struggling to get it, see? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm doing now, we're just doing the stop cuts on the top of the bells. And you'll notice as well, um, when I'm carving, I organize things in a specific order. So you, you probably, most of you got used to the way that I organize stuff. I always get that most difficult carving, whatever is most, um, how can I put it, most pressing in my own mind, whatever I'm sort of uh, not concerned about, but that I feel is most challenging, I will get that done first get that out the way, and then go on to the other parts afterwards. And it's the same principles that we're using, it's stop cuts, it's using those stop cuts as a barrier, we're cutting away from ourselves as much as we can, we secure it in the vise, and keep chipping away. We've got as well, um, for any of you interested in that side of what we do, we've got some scroll saw projects coming up because we haven't done one of those for a little while. So we've got a few videos on that. And we'll also have some different ones on different ideas with the wood carving. Um, we got one to film. Dad was gonna go over a few of the basics again with us. I think you were wanting to focus on key rings again, weren't you? Yeah, I, 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 just, I just want to... There's an area you feel that yeah, is neglect area. neglected. Yeah. 
So we're going to go back over that, sir. So, but we will go back over that. We've just as well, um, last week we were showing you a few designs that had been done by school children. So those uh, love spoons have been completed and they're going to be sent, they're on their way back up to the school. So that I think that finishes our involvement with the school projects this year. What they do, the schools, see there's a little bit more interest around anything to do with the love spoon early in the year because you've got Valentine's Day and you've got Welsh Valentine's Day as well. So it tends to be a little bit of a a peak in, in, in the interest, doesn't it, around the early part of the year. Yeah. And of course it's a, it's a very good project for schools, we've mentioned this before. Yeah, we were talking about it last coins, week. You know, then you've got the material side of things. It's, uh, So you can see we've got that shape that we want and then we're just shaping around the, just to bevel the edges. And we are well on our way with this love spoon. There we are. And in terms of different then projects that we're working on, um, I'm just about to start working on some videos. We're going to do a video demonstrating making five different types of clock. And that's an area for all of you um, to have a look at is making clocks. Fantastic one. The difficulty we've always found, and I know it was all of yourselves helped us out with this, finding good clock movements, good reliable clock movements. But we managed to source some again. So that's, that's going to be coming up on the channel. What's up? You spotted a friend. Who spotted something? <laughs> Thomas Woodcarver's looking at the computer screen and laughing, but he's not telling me. Choke the bad experience and drive on. Spot on. Yeah. It's difficult though when you do have the bad experience, it takes a bit to get over it. I can think of a few oh, different ones over the years. This was sorry. Compliment on the um, the the, the spores of spoons among spring flowers. Ah, yeah, that was me last week running round yeah. a local. There's a local place um, called Colby Woodland Gardens, and it was my wife's birthday, so we went for a walk down there. And, uh, and the car was looking forward to the clock. And typical, yeah, that'll be a good video. Typical of myself, instead of just taking my wife for a walk in the Woodland Park, I took some love spoons and a camera with me. <laughs> so that was her birthday. She, she, she shared a romantic walk with me, the camera and the love spoons. Now, it, it's, um, it's a lovely area down there and uh, it's, we, we have the bluebells and things like that. I got a few more of those photos. They'll be coming up on Instagram this week. Um, oh, there was one I put actually on, on this, yeah, of course, this video. Um, is, is, is one similar to that one there. I would just notice in there, you'll notice that I started just picking it up in the vise a bit. When I do the insides of the bells, I always find you've got to, you've got to have a go in sort of both directions and find which way that the grain is working in best. It's not a problem on the outside edge, you're always carving outside. On the insides of the bells, carve it and find which way it wants to carve. It's, it's very interesting as well. You're carving that bell there now, the other two bells. Yeah. And, and I'm going to have, a, I, I can feel it now. I can feel it coming on. I'm going to have some critique now from Thomas the Woodcarver. I can, I can feel no, it. Honestly, <laughs> it's completely different to the way I would do it. It's completely different, which is hopefully encouragement for everybody because you, you find your own style. Now, now, Thomas the Woodcarver is being, being generous. He's probably standing there thinking, technically, he's doing that completely wrong. I know what he's thinking, see? <laughs> what it is, is that when you're, when you're watching myself carving, we'll have to do a live stream, and you'll have to, we'll just have to do the live stream with Dad carving, because Dad is much, he's much more technically correct. 
Um, no, it isn't that at all. It's well, you, 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 well, you, you always say I've got a very, a new, it's an unusual style and technique and approach that I, that I have with things, but it just works for me. Exactly. Um, exactly. Absolutely. And so that is the key thing. If it works for me, then yeah. why change it? Yeah. Um, and that's why we, you know, we share it, we demonstrate it, because it might work for you. But it would be worth seeing the differences with Dad yeah. for everybody, because you'll see he's got quite a different style. Well, I wouldn't do that bit there, no. No, I know. But if he if he stood here watching me carving, I, I'd probably make him. I'd make you rather nervous. Um, but this is what this is what happens is. You have your own style, you have your own approach, and that's the best style that works works Spot for yourself. On. Absolutely. When I was growing up, see, because this is, when we talk about these different experiences, some of my early experiences of carving was carving a flower, and 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 Dad would walk past and he 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 just he just have a, a little smirk to himself. I think, what's he smiling at now? And as he walked off, the petal would pop out. <laughs> <laughs> so the petal would fall out of my carving, and I'd be thinking, "Ah, oh, that's what he's uh, that's what he's smirking about," because he'd know what I'd done, but he wouldn't say anything because all part of the learning experience. I found it out for myself soon enough what he'd realised, and you learn, you learn from it. That's the that's how you do it. You so the next time you do your, your petal, you, you carve it at a different angle, maybe you don't carve it quite as deep. You learn, you change what you do, and you adapt and evolve on the back of it. But always, we've always had a, I think we've always had quite a bit of fun with it as well is the thing, so. Yeah. And that ultimately you've got to enjoy doing what you do. I was a, as a carver of over 50 years, have you, have you got any insight into, you know, things like pricing and any of those things that were being discussed? Have you got anything to add to the, to the conversation? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so really. I mean, you, you can only, uh, you know, you... Can you think of any specific without sort of going into uh, any um, individuals or anything like that, but can you think of any experiences you had? Can you think of any jobs where you, for instance, when you were starting out pricing and things like that and you realized? Oh, every single job I did. So you, you had a, a, a tendency to underprice, am I right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, because as, as the I think as Marcia said, is confidence. You know, you, you sort of. Um, well, I remember doing a, a repair, a window sill repair. A uh, car had crashed into a window, and I had to. Um, well, I was offered the job to repair the window sill, and it was an insurance job. So people say, "Oh, it's insurance job," you know, bump it up, like, put the price up. But you charge the I price. Charged what, Whatever it was to anybody else, you know. It, it, you charge the same price as. Uh, yeah. That's so, fair enough. You know, it's sort of. Um... Well, I can think. I, I can lead on from you, and I can think of when I first started in the workshop, and little things that Dad, excuse me, little things that Dad would do. That I, I felt uh, for ourselves were was sort of. Um, not causing a problem, but making life a little bit more difficult for us. Because when I first started in the workshop, people would buy a love spoon and dad would carve, not just now, we offer two initials in the price. But there we go, this is, this is getting you, this will get you thinking now. When yeah, I first I started, coming, I know where you're coming from, dad yeah. would carve as much in the way of letters and numbers on a piece as, as a person wanted. So I, I looked at that and I thought, cool, this is taking us some serious time. And for instance, we would have groups that were on their way to the Irish Ferry. And what it was doing, it was putting us under some quite severe pressure because the first person would come up and you'd say, oh, did you want any engraving on their love spoon? And they say, oh, yes, please. 
Can you carve on there Elizabeth and Jonathan? <laughs> well, a carving like that, you were talking more than half an hour potentially yeah. to yeah. carve yeah. all of what they wanted on there. And then you'd finish your carving, you'd carve Elizabeth and Jonathan, go, oh, that's beautiful. Can you put on there 16th of the 4th, 2020, whatever. And yeah. so when I, when and I the started, would come then and, and, the they, and then the next customer would come and they'd see that and they'd say, hey, that's lovely, that is. I, I, I really like what you've done there for Elizabeth and, and, and Jonathan. Any chance you can do that for me? Yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, we, we got Bartholomew and, uh, yeah. and, and, and Gen Genevieve. Yeah. And, and so this was something then that I, I don't, and I don't know, it may be relevant to others, it, it may not. But I changed that, that thing then in, in what we were doing. And I said, look, we can offer two initials for free. And then anything extra is 50p per letter or number, which is actually cheaper than an, an engraving machine. Because I had a gentleman in and he, he said, oh, he wasn't very happy with me because he had an engraving machine. And he said, you're undercutting me by 50p. So it was a pound a letter for the engraving machines because we do it by hand. Um, but it's just a thought then, you know, that may be relevant to others is how how we, you... We charge now, we put two initials included, don't we? In that's the right, that's right. And it's a process and in terms of learning, um, you know, how we learn from things. But there's another issue there, dear, which you obviously haven't, well, you, in fairness, you haven't thought about it. The fact that you you came up with that idea, and if anybody's working with a relative, like you know, you've got the father and son relationship. Yes. And so you have to allow the the son, the daughter, the relative, the other person working with you. You have to allow them. them yeah, exactly. It's it's that compromise have that. An input. Yeah, uh, not to be sort of ah, oh, I've always done it You've, this way. That's right. We're going to carry on doing it because that's how I do it. Exactly. So it's, there's always something to learn. Exactly, because if we were still doing that today, I mean, oh, it just the would be crazy. It, the thousands of extra hours that we would have put into um, yeah. different jobs. Now we're nearly here with this piece. And I think for now, let's have a little look. I think what we'll do is for everybody to be able to see, and so I, I, I'll have a little drink. I'm gonna do my best to try and finish this spoon off in the live stream. Oh, do you want to do If I have a, just a two minute, I just have a drink, two seconds, and if you can come in and just shellac. Oh, I was gonna say, you, you don't want to sand it down there. No, I'm just going to have two minutes and shellac then I'll finish the... off. Okay. If you could shellac the sunflower and the hearts. As oh. we always say as well, with the live streams, if you've got any questions, anything you want to ask the us. That, you can show that one as well, Dave. Right, we'll put that in. I'll just finish these bells off. Oh, yeah. And then we'll we show those as well. I've already had to, it's a bit of a, a cold and windy day here. It's sort of uh, gale force winds and it's quite cold in the workshop, but I built up a bit of a sweat already. So I have to take my jacket off. And so two minutes break and then we finish this carving off you all the same. Again, it's been a nice piece of wood to work with. It's helped out by the quality of the gouges. Let's have a look. There, there we are. If you want to come in, so we're just going to swap over two minutes. And I'm going to have a little drink, two minutes. You just want me to shellac the. If you want um, to shellac the sunflower for everyone to see. Yeah. If you bring it up in the vice. <coughs> That's imperfect. Brilliant. So give you an idea how that carving is coming together. As all French polishers and painters and 
uh, such like would agree, this is now the most difficult part of the carving. Uh, just, I'm just reading some of the, yeah. We, Do you want the bells done as well? Uh, <clears throat> I just noticed that the car was put on there. Um, no, not on the bells, yeah. We we have a similar... We, we Happy have Joan. A, I, I, that'll laugh. Um, there, there's a similar reference, what the car was put on there, that we have references in terms of our elbow and other ah, parts right. of, uh, of our anatomy as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very similar expression we use. Although I got to say, yours is probably a bit more polite, <clears throat> but we do use a similar expression. <clears throat> yeah, um, going back as well to some of the uh, different demonstrations that we, we we've got planned. I've um, I I, I want to focus on that clock one because we've got we've got a few nice designs. Some of the ones. For instance, Dad used to used to make um, a mini. Well, we we got like a micro grandfather clock and a mini grandfather clock. So, so Dad will demonstrate the mini one for you all to see on that video. And I've got a few other designs, including a love spoon clock that we will be demonstrating. I think I just put a bit of dirt on there by accident. You have to rub that back down. So those are a couple of demonstrations that we got coming up. Whenever I'm doing these bits now, this is always a little bit, I, I will go a little bit more cautiously here. And the reason for that, the vise, I need to clamp it properly in the vise and it's holding it there because I'm not sure I'm going to get a grip if I move further down. Will it? Yeah, we get a grip there. What it is, is that I rather, when I'm carving, I like to be over the center. If I'm too far there, then the, the gouge can go Hopefully, straight. Hopefully, by the next time we do the live stream, True. I will have changed the... Um... The vice needs relining. Yeah. That's just something that, that happens over time as it, as it gets squeezed in the vice. Because you haven't worked out yet how to reline the vice yourself, have you? I haven't done that job. I'm... I'm more than happy to leave you, uh, you do that one. Yeah. There's certain jobs I've, I've, I've never done too much really. And that's one of them, lining the vise. I'm looking at the edges of the vise there and I think you probably... I think it's very convenient that you haven't learned how to do the uh, lining of the vise, fair play. There's certain kit and certain jobs that I, that I leave to yourself. We've all got our own, our own fortes. And that's not that's one I've never done. It's um, it's the same the circular saw. I avoid using that if I can. Yeah, not a, a not a fan of the circular saw. Of, uh... No. So we're just working on this twist on the stem. It's just the same principles: stop cut, cutting down into the woods, and it'll create that effect of a twist. And it's a nice, um, it's a nice addition to a love spoon to finish it on the stem because it represents binding, growing together, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's what we try to do with the love spoons. You try to put meaning into it. So the eternity sign, you've got that idea of eternal life, eternal love, Celtic symbols. You've got Celtic links with Hurin Wales, the sunflower. We had this, the song, you are my sunshine, but also the idea that you hope that love will blossom or continue to blossom. The bells for the celebration and the hearts entwined together with the initials inside. <clears throat> and that's what we try to do, tell stories, get messages across with what we do. We're, we're very glad as well that this live stream has managed to, uh, so far, go okay because with the weather conditions that we got, I wonder whether we'd have had uh, connection problems, but thankfully we haven't so far. So you can see what I've done in the design is I've used the eternity sign 
to tie everything together. So this is almost, it's, it's like a linchpin. I think you did two drawings for this, didn't you? We, we did, I, I did two drawings. I was explaining earlier the technique where I did the top half and then I offered two options for the bottom half. And both, both um, individuals in this couple, both of them looked at the two designs and this is the one that they preferred. Which is very interesting because I would have chosen the other one. Because I know now straight away that whenever I, well, I, 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 go on, you explain. Well, I, I just would have chosen the other one. But strangely enough, that's working out quite nicely, dude. Well, it's interesting. Whenever I, whenever I've used the eternity sign in this way, Dad doesn't like it, <laughs> and I and I know where he's coming from. Where you know that there, there are sort of different things, but you're you're not keen on the eternity sign in this way. I don't know why. Just the other one was enclosed, wasn't it? But well, that's right, and it's 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 something that, and I've done this on a number of spoons. And whenever I've used it in this way, I know that it's not something that you're particularly keen on. And when I, the first few that I did like this, I learned quite early on, you need to leave plenty of wood in that middle section. Yeah. Give it as much strength as you can. So I think what happens when dad looks at this one, it's his, it's your joiner's, it's your joiner's head, it's your joiner's eye that comes into play. Yeah. But it's that, it's a little bit artistic. That's what we're trying to, to do. But a nice, uh, oh, yeah. nice symbol. Have you just read something? Yeah, Donald's saying, I have to say on the ambulance, we get several people who are not fans of the circular saw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, circular saws, uh, no, it's, it not a, I am not a, a fan yeah, at all. Says the same. I'm keen on the, uh, I just, I, I, I can, I'm, I suppose I'm just lucky because there's dad, there's my brother Math. They both use the circular saw. I mean, Math as well, he works, my, my brother now, he works with a chainsaw. And I, I'm the same, I'm not keen on that. I, so if I can avoid them, I, I avoid. I avoid the kit like that. I know my, my friend now, Ross, he's, he's here and um, he's been here and uh, he, he has, um, what do you call it, the spindle moulder, is it? He uses a spindle moulder. He's got it? that machine. Oh, right, right. <coughs> that used to be the worst of them all. And I don't like that one at all. And the other one, he's got the, which is, what's the other one called where you pull? They call it like a chop saw or something. Yeah, chop saw, yeah. Very powerful, powerful saw. I, I knock it. The nicest, the nicest circular saw that I've worked with um, by a distance is the coronet. That's the. Yeah, it's, a lovely, lovely it's, saw. it's it's a lot smaller, and it's so accurate, and it it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same feel as other ones, but you really you don't see many of them about, do you? Well, they've gone out of uh, But it was a lovely, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, we're nearly there. We just got to do our overs and unders. This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky, where it's, it's, the carving is straightforward to a degree, but it's, it's gripping it in the vise. So you hence can see, why you need new patterns. Hence why I need, yeah, that's yeah. right. We need a new new vice lining. So you can see when I'm doing this as well, I'm using the reverse angle. So I use the reverse cutting angle. Just to show you different ways that you can use the tools. That was a video actually suggested by um, my brother Math. He, he actually suggested us to do some videos. I'll throw it out to you all, see what you think. And he, he was gonna, he, he said, why don't you sort of pick out your top five, top five gouges that you use the most, which would be these two here, maybe this one, and just demonstrate the different ways of how we use them. I thought it was a good idea. So yeah, let us know if it's of interest and we can, um, it's another video we can have a look at. All right, so we're nearly, I got a little bit, we will take this back in next door to um, put it on the belt sander just to sand everything over but I've just got that little I just take that sharpness off 
because as you all know, we Beverly Edges do all of that shaping work. There we go. And I'm trying to think now, what other projects have we got on at the moment? What other spoons are we making? Did? We've just made a few for things like birthdays and anniversaries. We've always got stuff on for occasions. I got some specific flowers. That there's that one is one. I think there's a. Um, I'm not sure if there's a flower associated with Colorado on the one spoon that I've got to carve. Um, and there was another. <clears throat> I think it was a different design. Yeah, we, there's a bit of history with that one, which is that's our local, one of our local churches, Nevin. And Nevin's famous because it has the yew trees in the. Um, there you go. That's, the, that's the, one of the designs we're doing. It's the Celtic cross that you get in Nevin. And um, the, the yew trees there are famous. They call them the bleeding yew trees, don't they? Because yeah. the, the sap. And there's all sorts of different ideas. They say about the blood of Christ, that sort of thing with it. But the sap looks like it's bleeding. So they do they do like a pilgrimage, don't they, to the Nevin? Yeah. To see the bleeding yew trees. So let's just finish this one off. Interesting history on that, wasn't it? The, um, the Druids used to worship around the yew tree? The Celts. Oh, the Celts, was it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The for the Celts, the yew tree was sacred. And that's why you see a lot of yew trees in the grounds of churches. Yeah, and it's um, also as well, in my father-in-law's town there, in the middle of La Mancha, the juniper, which we sent some out to the carver, um, that, that place always gives me, whenever I'm there, I always think there's a lot of Celtic influence in that town. Um, and I don't know whether I'm complete, I may be completely wrong on that, but it always gives me that feel. And they are doing sort of research now and realizing that the Celts did travel and settle further than was sort of believed. But that, that particular um, tree, the, the juniper tree, it does, it does have some sort of characteristics similar. The carver pointed out, and you're quite right, reminded you of um, the smell of cedar. And it is, it is a type of cedar. I was asking my brother Matt about it, and he was saying that, yeah, it's, it's juniper is part of that family grouping. Right. So hence the, because when I translated it in, in Spanish, they call it savina. And some translate that then as, as um, cedar. And then when I've delved into it more, it's been translated as juniper. So this little bit here, that's one of the few parts there that I'm actually going across the grain. So you're just carving it a little bit differently. It's a bit sort of nice and steady because you are actually going across the grain. Just like so. There we go. Well, hopefully that gives you the gist of the carving. I'm going to finish off just the twists and a little bit of shaping. That'll be the last part of this live stream. Um, I'll probably... We've shellacked the... Yeah, we've shellacked the sunflower on there, so we've done that bit. Hopefully it gives you an idea for how that particular love spoon is made. We've still got a fair bit of work left on it, but it should give you the basic idea. As I said, any questions, any requests as well for different videos, because we'll keep getting content. You got that? We keep getting content up you for you all to see. Well Hopefully it is all useful. Any feedback as well on what we do? Any thoughts? Get them into us. Brilliant. Fantastic. One of my favourite timbers now in the Hollywood. Ah, now that would have been, wow. You've given yourself a challenge there because when we carve 
that that particular design, it's it's probably twice the size of that piece of wood. So that makes that makes it a lot more difficult when it's smaller like that. Excuse me. Because that's a misconception that we often get from customers is they think if something is smaller, that it's going to be um, a little a little bit less expensive. When the reality is that making things smaller from a carving point of view makes them more intricate to carve. There we are. I think that will uh, do us for today. As you can see, I got a little bit of shaping to do on the eternity sign, a little bit of shaping to do on those bells as well, and then a little bit of shaping on that twist and on the outside there. So still a decent amount of work left to do on there, but we've got, we've broken the back of that particular job. Thank you all again for joining us. We'll have our usual uh, Wednesday, we'll be uh, doing a, a video. It'll probably be something around the scroll saws. As we always say, we recommend the scroll saws because they're a really... That's, that's after being shellacked. Yeah, absolutely. There we are, that's the... Uh, name, that's the... There we go. I'll cover the names, but that's that spoon that we were showing you earlier that it's Dad's been working on. Shellac, so you can see you've got the 60 inside the diamond. And it's the, the same sort of oak as that one there as well. Yeah, we, we'll have the scroll saw video up uh, midweek. So uh, hopefully that will be useful, demonstrating again uh, different, different things and um, different ideas, different things that we make. Uh, if you haven't got a scroll saw, we always recommend it. Thank you all for joining us. And we'll be back again next uh, Monday, all going well. But thank you all again. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you all.